Yes, except that she was a little premature. Her mother wasn't allowed to have her with her the first week. And she's not nine years old, is that correct? Yes. At what age did you first have symptoms of abnormalities? <coughs> we weren't thinking about symptoms. We've never considered her to be abnormal. It's just... Your doctor is requesting us to see you here at the Children's Gardens Clinic. In his report, he speaks of bizarre and antisocial behaviour. She's a difficult child. Okay. Has she always been difficult? What was she like as a small infant? She never smiled. When she looked at you, it seemed sometimes as if she didn't really see you. Not affectionate, responsive, warm? No. No, not really. At what age did she begin to walk? Well, a little late. She was two years old. The thing was, she didn't seem to have any sense of territory. Sense of territory? Any homely instinct. It was as if she had no idea where she belonged. We had to watch her all the time, or she would just wander off, you see. As though you grew older, did you find she became more affectionate? Ah, oh, yes, she are. Uh, well, she always was a little distant. She doesn't like to be touched. Even as a toddler, she wouldn't sit in her lap, but you cuddle her. <coughs> She's a very private little person. Introverted, I've always said. Does she talk? Oh, she talks very well, though she does get a little muddled up sometimes. It can be a bit difficult to get through to her. But then she is quite an emotional girl. There are times when she just sits, you know, silent. Won't talk to anyone. Other times when she gets excited, there's no stopping her. Moody, you think. Has her behaviour ever been aggressive? Well, yes, there are tantrums. She'll flare up very suddenly, shout, run about the house, slam indoors, that sort of thing. Usually at night. Her nights have been hard. She cried every night till she was a year old, nearly all night long. There just didn't seem any way to comfort her. Oh, of course, she's much better now, but quite often we'll have whole nights without any trouble. Does she persist in wandering from home? Yes, I'm afraid that she has. She's often been brought back by strangers, on one or two occasions by the police. Just silly tomboyish things, really. Trespass, a bit of minor vandalism, but nothing serious. <laughs> Once she let some pigs loose on a farm, you know. Did you ever punish Birdie? At first we did, of course. Just a smack, nothing very... It was disastrous. She seemed to go absolutely wild, screaming, throwing herself about, or else she'd just become silent and rigid, sometimes for hours. We decided that any kind of physical punishment was wrong for Verity. She's an incredibly sensitive child. I see. And this is the first you've got to get help for Verity, Mr. Taylor? We didn't think anything was seriously wrong, you see. You get used to things, don't you? We just thought she was going through some funny phases. She's very different from her brother, Mark. He's three years older, but no two children are alike. Then last year, our doctor discovered that Verity had a mild epileptic condition. She's on drugs for that. <coughs> we thought that probably explained why she was so... We hoped she'd settled down. And she hasn't? No, if anything, she's... She's an intelligent child, you know. She's not stupid. She can be very imaginative, very witty. They're quite pleased with her progress at her primary school. She plays with other children. Has friends? No. No, she usually plays alone. The thing is, she doesn't seem to get on the wavelength with other children somehow. We've noticed that she fears from being a little too high-spirited or closed up in a funny way. You get children like that, don't you? Who are just solitary by nature? She always seems so much happier playing in her own little private world. <coughs>
Be me. careful! I don't know. I won't. I won't. I'll be careful. What is it? My village. Oh, it's very nice. Clever girl. This is my castle. I'm inside it. Yay! Are you? Yes. Yay. And no one else can get in. Well. It's all locked up and safe. And they can't get in. Huh, do you not? Look out! What? You're knocking it over! Well, honestly, Verity, you've taken up nearly the whole floor. Look, you have to find a way out anyway. We're gonna have tea in here. Don't touch that! Oh, we won't touch any of it, Verity. You put it away yourself. I don't want to put it away. I want to play with it. You can play with it later. I don't want later. I want now. Well, we're gonna have tea in here. I don't care! Now, now, now! I want my village now! Stop shouting and do as I told you. Wait, I'm deaf, I'm deaf. I can't hear you. I'm deaf, I'm deaf. I said do as you're told. Jean, don't. You tell me. It's mine. It isn't yours. You can't have it! I'll grab it! Verity, stop! Dear Mr. Taylor, I sympathise with the difficulties you are having with your daughter, but I must tell you that there are unfortunately no establishments in this area for disturbed teenagers and young adults. I understand that application has been made to you on behalf of our daughter for a place in your residential unit. I am only writing to underline the urgency of the situation. Our youngest son, who is only four years old, has been suffering acute mental distress in recent months which has been manifested by a lack of appetite, sleeplessness, and bedwetting. The headmistress of the nursery school that he attends has offered to depose to the effect that his current home situation is having a severe effect on him. <coughs> I am sorry to say, as we run the only adolescent unit within a very large area, we are inundated with requests and have no vacancy places at present. We will, of course, put your daughter's name on our waiting list. does seem as if it's the beginning of the way back for her. I suppose he is right to say we should leave in another week or so before we visit her. Well, she's only been in there a month, and he said she's still not talking to the other teachers in the hostel, in the place. Isn't it wonderful to think of her pottering around, helping with the gardening and the cleaning? And he actually thinks he may be able to persuade her to take a little part-time job soon. Oh, I hope he won't push her. Isn't it enough for now that she feels safe? Contented? I'm sure we can trust his judgment. He obviously cares for her. I suppose it is the beginning of the way back for her. Impossible. But don't bother to us. 
He says he has a place for her. He is willing to take her back. Mrs. Taylor, when Verity first went to the halfway house two years ago, she laughed at her for seven weeks. She related only to Barker, and that was only minimally. Then the sudden total lost control and the accident? I know, but... We've already tried it once, Mrs. Taylor. The trial weekend she spent there last year was a disaster. You see, Doctor, it's been the only place she seems really happy. Couldn't we try it one more time? I'm sorry, it's not a gamble we can afford to take again. Verity simply has not got enough stability for that kind of environment. Look at the record, Mr. Taylor. At the hospital where Verity was being treated for the broken bones in her feet, she attacked one of the nurses. That's why she was referred to me at this hospital. I did not attack. She said she only pushed her away when she tried to... The report says severe concussion. Oh, she only hit her head when she fell. It wasn't Verity's fault. Mrs. Fault. Taylor, in the last 17 months she's been admitted to this hospital, she's become less and less responsible for her actions. Less and less able to manage herself. And now you're saying you're considering putting her in your locked geriatric ward? Oh, she's only 19, for God's sake! You think I want to put her there? As far as I'm concerned, it's a last resort. We've tried everything else. In the last year, she's become increasingly disruptive and destructive. She breaks windows, destroys property, intimidates the other patients and torments the nurses. And as you know, she, she's absconded many, many times. <gasps> because she's unhappy! Yes. We just feel that a locked ward in a mental hospital is absolutely the wrong place for Verity. So do I. So do we all, Mr. Taylor. But there aren't many right places for a girl like Verity. I wish to God there were. We don't know how to help Verity. She's never responded to any sustained way to any kind of medical treatment or psychotherapy. No doctor has been able to give a definite diagnosis of her case. She... Well, looking at her over the crazy bunch of old people won't help. The only alternative seems to be that she returns home to live with you. Shall we arrange that, Mrs. Taylor? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I will. Uh, I will. 